All right, welcome back, everybody. You know, the woman you're about to meet has been a friend of mine for as long as I've been here at Channel 3. I just absolutely love her. That's awesome. Her name is Susan Linker, and after years of working in an animal shelter here in Connecticut, she decided to venture out on her own, starting an animal sanctuary in Ashford. Do you know how hard this is to do? Oh, the this millions, is incredible. Millions of dollars this is re it requires right. to build this animal shelter, which is just incredible. So with a lot of help, and a lot of money. Her dream is coming to fruition. It's taking some time, but she's getting there. It's called Our Companions Animal Rescue. So get ready to be wowed by all the work that's being done to help animals at this wonderful, wonderful organization. Come on, Scott, let's go. I'm coming in. <laughs> Heading into the Chelsea Dog Cottage here at Our Companions Animal Rescue. While it's fit for a king, it's actually home to Wizard. Hello, Wizard. <laughs> and Tucker who's getting his forever home after being here for three years. How exciting. Tell me a little bit about our companions. Yeah, so we founded in 2002, and the impetus for starting the organization was this piece of land. And as you remember, it did not look like this. It was a huge, defunct factory farm. And But what we saw was 40 some odd acres in a place where we could build an animal sanctuary, which was a dream of ours for a long time. So uh, we started with our first rescue cottage in 2012, and since then we've done three phases of construction. The goal of this animal sanctuary? The goal is to give an environment that's cage-free, that's home-like, where we can tend to whatever needs they have. And sometimes it takes weeks for them to get adopted, sometimes it takes years. But the goal is that every day while they're here, they become more and more adoptable. And so when you look around and meet some of our friends here, you'll find, like I said, it's the home of the misfits, you know, the fixer-uppers. But these are the animals that, you know, it's really, shelters are good for highly adoptable animals. Animals that need a longer term rehab really should not be living in cages. They need the right environment to heal. And that's what the sanctuary is about. And the beautiful thing is, people come to adopt these animals all the time. In fact, you know, um, the more, imperfect they are. They seem to be more attractive to people because much like people, you know, nobody is perfect. Take for instance, Skip and Cornbread. Hi guys, aren't they beautiful? These two are super kitties. So Cornbread came to us three times the size. He is quite the food hog, um, but we've got him down to a desirable weight. Yeah, he looks good. He looks great. I mean, he could barely walk when we first came here. He and Skip, Skip is unrecognizable as well. Uh, Skip was skin and bones and pretty much in a, such a diabetic sick state that he was close to death. He had untreated diabetes. With a lot of work, they're both doing great now, living here in their cat cottage, which includes an outdoor catio, ready for their forever homes. Let's head back to the dog cottages and meet Missy. Well, hello you, oh, hello she's you, small. hello you. This hello. is Missy. These dog cottages serve as more than shelter for the dogs. So we have four of them, and these cottages really are meant to serve as close to a home as possible. Um, you know, the idea is we're taking dogs that have had um, questionable, if any, indoor living experience. So the whole idea of them is to be able to replicate what it is to live in a house. So there's a kitchen, there's a living room, they have their bedrooms. And really, it's not to be cute or kitschy, it's basically to give them the experiences to be successful living at home and the fact that a lot of these dogs have special needs and it takes them months or years to get rehabilitated, we're giving them the experiences and the comfort to be able to be good house pets when they finally get adopted. We focus on dogs that need behavioral intervention, medical, and oftentimes both. The entire village is built on love and donations. 100% of our funding comes from donations, so we could have all the best plans in the world but unless we don't have the resources to back it up, um, nothing matters. So donations obviously are critical for our existence. It's essential. There are 35 employees here and close to 400 volunteers, all working to make sure these animals get what they need. Whatever it takes, you know. I mean, they, they deserve to have whatever care they need. And that's part of our, our uh, promise here at the sanctuary is they're going to get what they need. And you know, we say we're always doing the right thing for animals. It's never easy, it's never cheap, and it's never convenient. <laughs> but I sleep at night really well. And that, you know, we all, and, and the fact that we have our donors and our volunteers and our staff trust that all of these animals are gonna get what they need. Our whole organization is built on that trust. And um, so, 
So that's why we welcome these special guys. In terms of your building, your, your, your dreams for what you had envisioned for this 40 acres, yeah. how far are you? We are just scratching the surface. Um, we have now four cottages for dogs, these two for cats. Like I said, our next phase is going to be three more cottages. That's going to be a small animal cottage, another cat cottage, and a dog cottage. But still, we're only halfway built. Um, we are approaching construction in phases. As our organization grows, our ability to expand grows. So our next phase is going to start. We're going to start construction next year. And we probably have probably at least two more cat cottages, probably three or four more dog cottages in our future way in our future, but you know, the whole site has been approved for 16 cottages total here. So it's a little animal village. Doesn't that sound awesome? It sounds awesome. It's really a dream. Mm. You know, it was a defunct it. chicken farm. Oh really? Where I was gonna ask what was that before were yeah. in cages, they were oh. it was it was a terrible situation mm -hmm. and it had gone out of business and Susan took this this vision of this empty land with no well, no water, right. no nothing. And she said, you know what, I think I'm gonna do this. And it's it's literally yeah. millions of dollars in fundraising. I, but she's doing incredible work and she you know, she summed it up right there. She says she's doing the right thing for animals. Right. So doing uh, the right thing. Susan and her staff are doing again wonderful work. Would you like to help? They need cat food. Mm -hmm. And you can go to OurCompanions.org for more information. Our Companions right there. OurCompanions.org for more information. All right, yeah. so let's correct ourselves, okay, Irene. Okay, so you know. at the very beginning of the show, yes. we were doing a story about the key lime Kit Kats. Yes, exactly. And Renee Danino came in and said, hey, you know what? Those aren't a dollar a piece. Well, I looked it up. They're $1.49. $1.49. That'll, that'll, I don't think it'll break the bank, but if you want to get your Key Lime Kit Kat bars, they are $1.49. We do apologize for the misinformation. <laughs> and break me off a piece of a Kit Kat bar. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Thanks, Bye. Irene. Thank you. Have a great Have a weekend, great everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye. Happy Friday.